welcome to the Independent Producers Organization program. This is the program that showcases independent producers, their productions, and provides a forum for discussing issues which affect independent television producers here in the Pacific Northwest. Hey, well, welcome to the Independent Producers Organization Live Showcase. We do this show once a month on the second Wednesday from 7 to 9 on Channel 23, and it repeats uh, various times, and we'll put those times up about halfway through the program, around 8 o'clock. We'll put those times up so folks know that they can uh, let other folks know when this is playing so they can check it out. We've got two guests for an hour each, and uh, we'll spend about 50 minutes each. We've got a roll-in in between. The roll-in will be... A 20-minute video of the Veterans for Peace commemoration of Veterans Day, which just happened, you know, a week or so ago. And uh, there's some speeches and some marching and some, uh, some uh, they didn't play taps this time. They played a, an English anthem of some kind. But anyway, our first guest will have uh, Richard Carpenter on my right. Introduce him. Richard Carpenter is a producer of Portland Cable Access Community Media. Jump back in time there a little bit. Right. <laughs> so it right. used to be Portland Cable Access. So Richard. Okay. Uh, Albert Kaufman. He is uh, with Population Connection, and it's so important to deal with overpopulation problems. Now, it's like every day it gets more important. Every day it gets more important. Well, I want you to go ahead. I think I've covered who you're with. And you and we certainly welcome you back again this time. Thank you, Richard and Jim, for having thoughts. me back. Sure. Well, uh, I think just to start out today, um, very interesting article in the New York Times came out today by Thomas Friedman, and Thomas Friedman's been well, he's writing a, mixed a lot. Bag, isn't he? <laughs> he is a mixed bag, but he has he has uh, yeah. dr drunk the Kool Aid at this point, yeah, and uh -oh. he he's written an article <laughs> called uh, "The World Is Full," and I think it's really uh, one of these kind of uh, moments in time where we're seeing the word population start to come up in just about every That's conversation right. you know, having to do with world affairs. And if That's you right. look at what's going on in the Middle East, if you look at what's going on in our own country with gasoline prices, um, everything seems to have to do, you know, whether it, if, if it's not climate change, it's population growth, and the two go hand in hand. And so today, you know, Thomas Friedman basically hogging the number one spot on New York Times in terms Good. of the article that's being most read and most shared around the world is an article called The World is Too Full. And I think finally something that many of us have been talking about our whole lives, um, I've started kind of getting involved in this about 15 years ago, I think finally the rest of the world is starting to catch up and realize that a lot of these symptoms that we are dealing with, whether it's traffic congestion, species loss, um, crowding, whatever it would have you, are caused by population growth. And so now we can talk about some of the um, solutions and also some of the action I think that we need to take. You know, I think over there in Israel and Palestine, if they weren't fighting over that land, trying to get it, simply because if there were not so many, it just <coughs> wouldn't would alleviate be a some of the tensions, you would think. Wouldn't be a problem. Yeah, both the Israelis and the Palestinians have growth rates that are uh, humongous and they also have obviously a water problem which is another issue that's, that's um, big pressuring mm -hmm. our world you know fresh water is uh, is a resource that we only have so much of and between agricultural use and mm -hmm. industrial use um, we are really at a, at a quandary as to how we're going to fulfill that and in a place where you have already got very little water flowing mm -hmm. and then you've got populations both of humans and and animals growing um, exponentially, you're obviously going to have conflict. And it's not just in Israel and Palestine, it's in Turkey, it's in uh, Iran, it's in uh, places all around the world. In Klamath Falls. Klamath well, Falls. Well, right. <laughs> and, and example. I think uh, both New Mexico and Arizona, not that they, they, they really need water right now mm -hmm. for fires, but they're taking water below the ground. Mm -hmm. and, and it's like well, we'll just take it till it's gone. I almost feel that's their attitude. Right. And you can't do that. Right. And, and one of the places where that's really happening and that's coming to a real head is Yemen, where we're having mm. a lot of, um, you know, uh, 
revolution going on. They're part of the, the spring mm -hmm. uh, where there's a lot of um, unrest and, and people pushing back against the government. Well, the, the capital city of Yemen has been um, d pulling out all of its underground resources of water for years, and they claim that in 10 years the city will actually run dry. And yeah. you think there's a problem with um, people fighting and being upset and, and unemployment and various kinds of um, difficulty will take away the water from a community and you'll see um, you know just really how bad things can get in the old west you know that was the big deal mm -hmm. you, you don't you What's, didn't mess with the water it's going on in alberta canada with these tar sands too they're pumping an awful lot of water out of the, the groundwater right and uh that and the, the oglala water uh, aquifer as well and it's taken millions of years thousands anyway but it possibly millions of years for this water to filter down in there Right, and uh, they're pumping it out in a matter of decades. Yeah, one of the interesting things that's come across my um, reading recently is I've been reading an Adbusters, an excerpt of an article that came out of the National Review that talked about advertising. And you know, we don't, we we all kind of get a sense that we're being advertised to constantly, and we want to buy things, and we want to have more and better because that's the messages we keep hearing. But it, I've never really put it together so clearly that that. Um, advertising that's coming to us and the growth fueled capitalist system that we live in and that we are spreading around the world actually also impacts um, how we live and, and the growth of our of our world and the kinds of economies that we're building around the world and I think the big message that I would like to say I mean there's like typical answers to the population problem that that are you know some simple things that we can do um, you know provide contraception and make it accessible yeah. and free and provide sex education at all levels and um, make sure that young women have um, economic opportunity and education all of these things do so much to to reduce um, the population growth around the world as well as the United States but I think one of the interesting things that I'm coming to believe is that we'll actually also need to, to tackle the growth economy that we live in and the constant advertising that we live with because these messages of more and more and more mm -hmm. it yeah. not only do I want more things but I probably want bigger family and every one of those members of that family right. are going to want their SUV and are going to want their multiple mm -hmm. you know things and I had this idea spiking over here today that one message that could be is that we well we obviously you know mantra is that we need less things but mm -hmm. think of think about having one of something rather than multiples you know I think we're, we're, we're really like hoarding society we like to have collections of things we like right. to get one more I constantly coming to people's homes who have collections of snuff boxes or all of these oh. Xbox games or whatever it is <laughs> and I think if we you know one of the great things about Portland and that's coming out in shows like Portlandia is is our is our culture our subculture where things are swapped you know where things are exchanged where free cycle exists where That's people good. go around and go into free boxes and I, I just got back from Las Vegas Nevada this crazy crazy place you know talk about a place that's gonna run out of water probably within a few moments mm -hmm. um, you know people are just they're in their SUVs they're driving down the hill so they can get to their various um, stores and then they're driving back up the hill and filling up their various nooks and crannies and there's no there's no sharing it seems to me you come to a place like Portland and there's a free box on every corner and there's people trying to figure out how to share garden space how to farm each other's lawns and yeah. things like that and I'm not saying Portland's better than Las Vegas I like living here more but I do think that we're we're taking a step in the right direction we're, we're preparing for a future that really looks different than where we were 10 or 20 years ago. And you go to a place like Las Vegas or, or Phoenix and you're just like, wow, this place is living in the past. This place is living in, um, we need more malls. We need more stuff. Phoenix is we the need, same way. Yeah, we need to mm -hmm. fill up our coffers and we need to make money to be able to fill the cars with gas to get to our jobs. And Portland, like I think it's you know really setting an example for the rest of the country, if not some parts of the rest of the world too, about ways that we can be different, you know, a very different mentality. And I think, frankly, given the price in the spike of oil, um, given the price of other commodities, food, I mean, there's been stories uh, in the, on the radio and TV recently about uh, bread and how bread is so central to Middle Eastern diets and how the price of bread is going up like this. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, and Portland, I think, is showing that there is another way to do it. There's a more communal way to do it. There's an emphasizing relationships with each other way to do it rather than just, you know, thinking, I mean, obviously, if I get hungry, I, I'm going to figure out a way to feed myself. But um, until that time where it becomes that kind of scarcity, training ourselves to do something in a little different fashion, I think, is key. And I, I really do think that also advertising advertising is just going to need to go and I, I I think that Portland also could be a place where we could set uh, the bar on that as well mm -hmm. you know places like Sao Paulo have outlawed billboards they've outlawed all signage mm -hmm. on any of any kind of uh, size in the, and this is one of the biggest cities in the world so that's something I've talked about on the show before and something yeah. I'd love to bring to Portland also well, well, the, the other exactly right. the other half of population I mean population is kind of like bouncing around a pogo stick but in order to be moving with two legs, you got to bring in consumption. Mm -hmm. Consumption is what you know, which is part of what advertising is all about. Uh, I've read where you know we could have 10, 15 million, billion people on the planet if everybody was to live keep their life. Keep going like we are. Right. Well, I mean, if no, that, that's true too. If we keep going like we are, but at 10 or 15 billion people, the Earth could support that if people grew food in their backyard and and took the profit motive out of everything. You mm -hmm. know. It, Figures vary who you listen to. Perhaps the Earth would be better with four billion. I don't know, but a lot of the problem is the amount of consumption. Everybody needing so many things. Mm -hmm. That's the other half of it. And there, and there, uh, one is I don't know. Would you consider population by itself corporate driven? Consumption <laughs> certainly is. Well, I think the two obviously go hand in hand with each other. I think our population is um, a factor of of the the kinds of messages that we hear you know our, our our population growth was growing at a very low rate for many many yeah. years and finally in the industrial revolution time it started to pick up but not until i think like the 1960s did we hit three billion people now we've been adding about 10 billion people almost every 10 or 12 and years mortality has changed it just and seems like yesterday and six billion right now what, seven We're over billion. seven billion. Oh, that just was just no the time at all. Mark. Just right, well, a lot of that's because people living longer too. There is that. That's a part of it. That's, that's a part, part of, it. of it. it. There's also people being, you know, being healthier, living healthier lives. That's right. But I do think that that a, a big part of the challenge that we face is that the messages that we get are, you know, you are free to do what you want. You don't really have to care about. Um, your neighbor, you don't really have to care about the planet as long as your personal liberties are met. Yeah. You know, in this country, mm -hmm. we're really fighting a battle between a group of people who feel like, you know, my way or the highway, and 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 I want my freedom, I want my guns, I want the freedom to Sounds be as fat as I want, I want the freedom to uh, to just really be able to kind of move my arms until it hits your nose. Mm -hmm. And then we have, I think, another group of people that sees the writing on the wall, who are like, you know, people like Bill McKibben. Who are looking at the science and are going, okay, well, last year was the hottest year that we've ever had on record since anyone's ever been keeping records. Um, yeah. Last year, you know, was the hottest. Last year was, I mean, look at the, think yeah. about in the last couple of months the kind of storms we've been having. I mean, Joplin, Missouri wiped yeah. out. Twice tornadoes, as many, I think, you know, tornadoes saying. in Massachusetts. I think these are wake up calls to all of us that obviously, you know, the situation is not normal. And so, a lot of us, I think, are waking up and going, okay, well, if that's the situation, and, you know, if this has, if, if global warming or climate change is real, and, you know, we're, and water is threatened, and the population is growing, okay, so what do we do about this? And, you know, we're running up against folks in, you know, in corporate America who are buying our politicians and saying, uh, these people are saying, well, no, you know, corporations can give to elections, and corporations are basically people. And, uh, you know, and, and, and we're going to, and jobs are so important. I mean, what, what yeah. is so important about a job? A job is important because it allows me to feed myself and, and get some um, compensation. But if, if my job is making bullets or is, or is doing something that's harmful to the planet and making it so that future generations can't live here, is that really the mm -hmm. end all be all of our, of our economy? I, and I, I think, our, you know, our economy really needs to change. I mean, Adbusters is calling for an American revolution right now. They're saying uh, that it's come to that, that we've tried all these different things. We've tried recycling, and we've tried, you know, telecommuting, and we've tried improving cafe standards for cars, and we've tried, you know, making abortion legal, and we've tried, you know, doing various things to try to make our government more solid and, and attract better people. But instead, 
you know, it's it's really fraying at the edges, and I'm I'm pretty much with them. I think that that basically we need to get corporations out of our government. Um, we need to probably get back to a place where the people have a bit more say of, of what's going on, and we start finding the smartest people, uh, people who understand about disaster relief, people who understand about growing yeah. food, you know, get farmers mm -hmm. to the table, get orchardists to the table. The people that I've met that seem the smartest around food production are people who are actually doing it, you know, who are out in the field, particularly like folks here in town, the Home Orchard Society. I mean, yeah. these guys, you get a, a group of people for, who, are, who are orchardists, who are really into growing trees, some of the most brilliant minds I've ever met. And these are the folks who are going to basically save our asses, if you ask me. Mm -hmm. you know, when we push comes to shove. Yeah, yeah right. I mean, can you, do you know how to uh, start a garden? Do you know how to, you know, I, I was uh, recently at a, a class I took called Agents of Change um, in uh, Circles, uh, what is it called? It's from the Center for, Ethical, Center for Earth Leadership. And the class is called How to Be an Agent of Change in Your Circle of Influence. And the folks that come together in this class are all people who want to change things. You know, they want to see about recycling more in their workplace. Okay. They want to learn how to get their church to recycle, you know, things cool. after the yard sales that they have. This one guy came up to me and he said, you know, we're all just building dirt. He said, and, and if you're not building dirt, you're not doing anything. And what, is he, what okay. does he mean by that? Yeah. He's talking about, you know, actually growing food for ourselves. Oh, okay. And so, uh, and, and probably becoming uh, dirt ourselves. I mean, I think that's also part of the part you know, of the and, and dirt is where well. you set roots too. Well, I think right. we're doing real good with these farmers markets. Yeah, I, I out in the Beaverton, just swarms of people, mm -hmm. which is good. That's yeah. great because they're really out getting close to where it all is. Right? Yeah, I mean, farmers yeah. markets are key. Having m closer access to our food, knowing where our food comes from. I mean, look what's going on in Germany and and Europe right now. This huge E. coli breakout. E. Coli, yeah. Oh, yeah. another example. Twenty-six that could, people. That could be happening in the United States. I mean, it, it does has. happen on different levels in the United yeah, States. Different. And if we want to avoid things like that, we're going to have to do a, a better job of getting our food. Um, in, you know, I mean, just read uh, read uh, Michael Pollan's stuff. You know, we have to get our food to be actually nutritious and local mm -hmm. and uh, you know not have GMOs and not have pesticides all over it and you know instead what we're getting is we're getting the huge corporate um, food companies are, are, are pushing their agenda in Washington DC which is then pushing the agenda out to our schools and out to our government agencies and instead of getting like what we need the next steps we need to take to have a healthy planet we're instead getting uh, spoon-fed the same stuff that we've been getting for 20 or 30 years, and it doesn't work. It ends up, you know, creating these um, feedlots that are full of mm -hmm. E. coli that, you know, yes, it's Europe today, but tomorrow it very well might be the United States. So, you know, if you're getting your spinach from Albertsons or you're getting your, uh, your broccoli from, you know, who knows where, and it's been sprayed and it's traveled 2,000 miles and it lands in a Walmart, you don't know. You may just be the next person to pick mm -hmm. up uh, E. coli. So... You know, there's a there's a lot of issues I think that uh, that, that plague us. I mean, populations obviously one, consumptions one. Um, I do think that for our own benefit, you know, for the lives that we have left to live, you know, yeah. each of us ten or twenty or thirty years, it makes sense to just start making as much of a change as we can, and setting the pace for the generations that are coming coming after us. I, I, mm -hmm. I never think it's right to mm -hmm. think, well, they'll take care of themselves. Mm. The, the the people after us will take care of them. They can pick up all the pieces we left. Mm -hmm. No, people now need to think, how can I make it better for the people of the future? I mean, you're talking about your children. Right. And your <clears throat> grandchildren. And one, one can't overemphasize the bio-localism like you were talking about. Yeah, you're buying local food and you're growing your own food, but that also cuts down the amount of gasoline being used to, to bring this from all over the world. It cuts down the amount of uh, emissions. So. One solution usually has many different facets to it. Oh, absolutely. And that, that is something that, uh, that that we need to pay attention to. I think that this, uh, I grow a small garden, it's nominal, hardly, you know, compared to what I consume, but just to be able to get into the earth has its own rewards as well, like, you know, making dirt. Absolutely. I love that. That's great. <laughs> think yeah. about making your own garden is things like zucchini and cucumbers. They're all ready at one, at one time. <laughs> right. That's yeah. Still, but still, you need to do it anyway. You need to do it anyway. Right. We just started a um, community garden that's actually not far from here. 
on 3rd and Hancock Northeast. Is that the one you had on Facebook? That's right. Yeah. 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 We were calling it the birthday garden. Mm -hmm. And uh, it sort of started on my 50th birthday around that time, so we called it the birthday garden. But we're hoping that people will come there and celebrate all sorts of um, you know, reasons to celebrate. But uh, it's really fascinating. It's very close in to the uh, center of Portland. So, for instance, we're about uh, just a few blocks from Memorial uh, Coliseum. Really? And so, so we are getting a lot of Park. interesting people sort of passing by and learning about what we're doing. We're hoping also to make an educational effort as well. Um, one of the things we haven't talked about so far that's been on my mind a lot too is yeah. um, the the uh, move to uh, cell phones and, and mobile devices that's going on in our society. I um, a, a while back I, I was realizing that everyone around me, I've been taking the metro and uh, I'm sorry, taking the max and taking uh, you know, the bus and things. Right. And I had gone from being, I'm a very gregarious person to talk to people. I'll strike up a conversation right. with just about Good. anybody. And I noticed that more and more people are sitting there on their um, devices. Yeah. And right. so I developed a little game and it's called uh, sort of follow the rabbit. And basically it's this little game piece and you know, I've been passing them out to people. And the idea is to encourage people to um, basically put their phones away, um, take out their earplugs and engage with each other and you get points for different kinds of motions and i think that is also um, a key to kind of creating a future where we're a little bit more communal and a little less um, isolated and on our own and you know there's been a lot of talk lately about how we're getting to a point where we're very much um, going inside and we're staying away from interacting with other people and so doing things like creating a community garden or joining your neighborhood coalition or going out dancing or doing, you know, there was this book a while back called Bowling Alone, how our society had gone from uh, a, a, a group that had played bridge together and bowled together and danced together. And there were all these things, you know, you'd go to people's houses for potlucks. And that has started like really kind of been teased out. And Portland um, is very interesting as one of those places where actually that trend hasn't, hasn't continued. But you go to a place like Las Vegas or many cities in the United States yeah. And people are just fine with um, sitting at home and watching their widescreen TV right. and, or sitting on Facebook and just, you know, interacting or mm -hmm. being plugged in and listening to their iPod. You know, and I'm all, I'm all for, if you've got a long trip or something, plugging in for a while and zoning out and falling asleep or whatever you need to do. But this whole tendency that we have to, you know, start, of start focusing on this yeah. instead of focusing on what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. And the way I've really been thinking about it is um, that I, what happens is when you, when you zone out and you're looking at a device, you stop being able to see the offers that are going around in your circle, in, in your field. So let's say I'm looking at my device or I'm plugged in and I'm single and I'm looking for a date and I'm looking for a date <laughs> and right next to me is this beautiful <laughs> person who, right. you know, uh, all I'd have to do is turn next to me and start up a conversation. Yeah. And maybe that person isn't the person that I'm eventually dating, but that person invites me to a potluck or invites me to a movie and they bring their sister along. Sure. And it turns out, you know, the, her, the sister isn't the person, but the sister, you know, you never really know mm -hmm. where your romantic things are going to happen. You don't know exactly <clears throat> how your work stuff is going to happen. Sure. And, and that all builds. And if you're stuck kind of paying attention to some app on your iPhone or whatever it is, you you have a good chance of missing the, out. The epitome of tunnel vision. You just, you, you just phase everything out. Right. E email has taken over so much of that, and I suppose the texting, because it seems like situations where we always call, pick up the phone and talk to someone have gone to the other. Mm -hmm. Now, this isn't that much to do with population, but I suppose in a way it is. If there weren't so well, in order, many people, in order to make it profitable, there has to be a lot of people out there. Right. Absolutely. So population does figure into that. Right. right. And the devices, um, you know, they're pushing their the the stuff that people are reading is pushing a particular agenda. You know, it's everything. There's advertising mm -hmm. throughout, woven throughout the stuff. I spend a lot of my time actually online doing um, activism, but also using yeah. these tools. And it's a mixed bag because, you know, you're, you could be calling for revolution on one hand and then on the side you've got an ad for Bank of America. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, yeah, it's sort of like, okay. It and, is ludicrous. <laughs> you know, and here in Egypt, you know, they used Facebook and they used Twitter to do their, their yeah. communicating and their connecting. And there's ads for, you know, Joe's mm -hmm. um, hummus on the side. Who knows what it was. But um, 
I mean, you do think like play, the newspapers and, and television stations are going to be full of messages of um, you know pro pro family pro large family pro growth it's kinds of there. messages because they get more you know their advertisers reach more people mm -hmm. their uh, you know hopefully they hope that that their uh, watchers their viewers are going to grow and so that they could sell more advertising yeah, and that kind of thing right. but I mean what an awful what an awful uh, uh, paradigm to be living under that we're, we're subject to and I mean this is a wonderful place that you've got community media here that's not subject to advertising and that you know mm -hmm. taking back a little of the oh, airwaves oh, okay places like this in Cebu are, I think are our saviors you know well I think it has to do with the community rather than, than uh, corporations mm -hmm. but you know this, this it occurred to me while you were talking I know how far back do we want to begin this trend I always began it with like the automobile mm -hmm. the, Transportation technology and communication technology is what's bringing us in, in closer and closer to ourselves. The start of the automobile, then the computer, then you know the cell phone, and uh, God knows what's next. But I think you could even bring it back to the Industrial Revolution, where mm -hmm. specialized people in, 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 in their aspects of their life, and they would, and uh, they became an appendage of the machine rather than the machine being an appendage of them. Right. And and, the, uh, and, the, it, and it just it just built from there. Don't forget the bicycle. Mm -hmm. that, that I mean that beats the car and it it just it'll just take over so many things and getting kids to school I've certainly been reading about that and that fellow we had on the show two or three months ago there's a lot of encouragement you keep mentioning important and being different in a lot of places there's a lot of movement towards bicycle and growing your own food and all that you know and and just a little side note on that and I I hesitate to plug uh, that much, but I must I must say that Portlandia, the show that, that's come on, to that, anyone yeah. that hasn't seen it, it's available on International Film Channel. You download it and put it on iTunes. It costs like $10 for all six of the first episodes that have come yeah, out. Money well it, is, <laughs> it is the funniest uh, show I, I've probably ever seen. Really? It's funnier because I live here in Portland, so a lot of the jokes are about Portland. But it's not just about Portland. It's also about a different way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. it, it, I, I recommend it to everyone, especially if you live in Portland. It's something really interesting. And, you know, if you download all of the six first episodes, it's basically a two-hour movie if you put them all together. And you will laugh harder than you have laughed in a long time. <laughs> Um, it's money well spent. You can share it with your friends. And I've watched it three or four times. And, you know, it's filmed locally all over Portland. Um, it's, it's taught me a lot about the place that I didn't know. And I, like I said, it's very funny. And I think it's also, it's almost like a little bit of a Bible of what's going on here, what's going right in Portland. You know, it mm -hmm. highlights things like people biking. It highlights things like people doing uh, stuff like city repair is doing, the intersection repair. Sure. It highlights the kinds of... Um, the kinds of meeting places that we come to here that are that are a little bit different you know that are a little bit more designed for pedestrians and for for community um, I don't know that a show like that could be filmed in in LA or another place like that because the mentality here is different do, but I highly I really think you ought to watch it every mm -hmm. time I go into a coffee I've shop seen the trailer no, no. <laughs> every time I go into a coffee shop or a no. bookstore and I say to the person have you watched Portlandia and they say oh no it's not important it is important it is okay. really some of the great stuff of what's going on here, and people really ought to watch it. And we're, you know, it's going to continue on, and you can choose to watch it or not. But you know, I, I'm curious. I want you to watch it, and I want you to mm -hmm. let me know. How do you get it? Uh, it's on the International Film Channel's website, and you download it on your computer, and you can play all the shows um, well, all together. And is that a cable access? It's the International Film Channel. It's a cable TV show station. Yeah. You know, now that you mentioned that, because right after half hour, I was thinking that we've talked about a lot of information. And uh, some of this stuff has websites so the viewers could follow up on this. Sure. Uh, we mentioned Bill McKibbins was at 350.org. Right. And that's all about, he was the one that was first one that was, well, one of the first that was flagging global warming, right? That's right. As I remember. Yeah. Very eloquent man. And uh, there's a lot of information about him, and he brings out a lot of information from other people. 50.org, and you mentioned a couple organizations, I think, that probably would, might be on Facebook. Well, also, 350.org is going to be doing a, I believe, worldwide uh, action on September 24th, and it's going to be, there's going to be That's one right. here in Portland as well. Good. That's something to know about. Well, my website, which is albertideation.com, I feature a lot of the topics that I'm talking about here. The game that I came up with is albertideation.com. It is a blog, yep. albertideation.com forward slash game. 
It has these little uh, transit pieces that you can print out and and play with uh, on on your uh, mm -hmm. trip next time you take the bus or max or an airplane, um, you know, or the train, whatever it is, or you can just sort of look at it. Interestingly, too, there was a, a book uh, to, that just came out recently that was talking about um, this guy who does tech writing for CNET and other companies, and he's saying, okay, well, you ought to go on a tech Sabbath. And, uh, you know, his, I forget the name of his book right now, but he says, you know, you get, you get so many points for having this device and so many points for having this device and so many points for having this kind of password, and then you add it all up. And if you've got too much points, oh. you obviously have a, a challenge and you need to, like, lessen things. That's a um, good idea. Okay. But uh, sometimes people don't realize how uh, set in this technology, these various technologies they are, right. until they just start enumerating them. Right. Yeah, my brother was just visiting, and he's probably not going to get to see the show because he lives in D.C., but uh, it was very interesting. He lives in D.C., he came out here, he had his iPhone, he had an iPad, he plays Scrabble with 14 people at a time on his oh, iPhone, my gosh. and he's got email coming in. Every time an email comes in, there's a particular noise. Every time a text comes in, there's a particular noise, and he's got a few other apps on his iPhone that are on that where people can contact him, like Facebook and another one called Grindr. And so, sitting with him, I've been sitting with him at a meal, and every 15 seconds, that that device will make a noise. And then he's got his phone. He's got his phone. He's taskmaster. And he's got the iPad. So there, it was just really something. And I, I had to explain to him, you know, I need you to, if you come back and visit again, I need you to turn this off for a bit and give us a break so we can actually converse. So, you know, that constant distraction, I think, does suit um, our capitalist society. It's like constantly, <laughs> let's look over here. And let's not let's not really focus on the actual issues that we have, and actually delve into them and tease them apart and figure out what's going on. Oh, instead, let's look at the shiny thing over here. You mm -hmm. know, ooh, a new car. Ooh, you know, a new gadget for my a new app, whatever it is. Yeah. And instead, I think we need more. Um, we need more uh, uh, activity where we're meeting together, whether it's in a small group like this or larger groups to actually figure out like what next steps we're going to take to basically save ourselves and any other semblance of life on this planet. Sure. I mean, if you're a beaver or a squirrel right now, you know, your your best hopes are that <laughs> humanity figures out um, how not to kill off everything besides itself. And, you know, we're, every prediction that not they're likely. making... We're going to take a lot of, a lot of things with oh, us. Oh, yeah, well, things are going off the wayside right now. I mean, species are dying at a rate that they've never died before since the Ice Age. But... Um, yeah, yeah, on that happy note. <laughs> you, uh, go ahead. Where do you get most of this information? Mm -hmm. You talked like, I mean... The internet, probably. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, what do you... I, I'll, I'll tell you. I, I can give you some ideas. Mm -hmm. uh, I read a, a magazine called Adbusters, which is a wonderful collection of stories about um, advertising. Uh, it's, a, it's also a story about particular corporations that it has targeted mm -hmm. as some of the worst... Um, it also highlights groups like the Yes Men who are doing something interesting and fun to push yeah. back. I read um, uh, Yes Magazine, which comes out of Bainbridge Island, oh, which is David also Corton. David Corton, uh, yeah. and his their their take on life, which is you know suggesting positive futures and positive news items that are going on in the world, places where people are you know. Um, stepping up and making a difference right now. They're building the community. Right. Their current issue talks a lot about prisons and our huge prison population in the That's United another, States, yeah. which That's is a huge very issue. And it's really, um, really very sad. We're, we're, our country incarcerates more people um, than any country in the world. And, um, and so many offenders, uh, you know, so many prisoners are people who did very little, and they just end not, up in that system. Nonviolent. Yeah, some do right. some pretty heavy stuff, and they do. Right? Uh, you know, and those people, you know, perhaps need to be in the prison system. But the way, you know, this issue, this current issue, talks to a lot of different um, uh, other solutions besides putting people behind bars, or ways to make their sentences shorter, or education programs that, so that when they do come out, they're a little bit more prepared than they were. Um, I also read um, Harper's Magazine. I've been reading that since I was a kid, and that's kind of a nice, oh, yeah. uh, progressive take on the okay. world. Um, I read uh, Common Common Dreams is a website that I look at. Truth Out is another website that I look at. Um, Did you check and I, I check Daily Coast from time to time, which is a blog that's a progressive blog to kind of keep tabs on what's going on in places like Wisconsin. Um,
um, where oh, yeah. people mm -hmm. are, are setting up a tent city around the capital right now oh. called Walkerville, which I yeah, just think right. is brilliant, mm -hmm. um, you know, and great um, developments like that. And, you know, I, I read the Oregonian, I read the Willamette Week and the uh, yeah. Mercury as well to wow. get a sense of what's going on around town. And then uh, Blue great. Oregon is a blog that I follow that's a political uh, lefty blog in mm -hmm. Oregon. Mother Jones? Uh, I look at Mother Jones from time to time as well. Yeah. You know, a lot of times there'll be articles that'll come up in front of me. I've got a few people um, on Facebook who post things religiously that, uh, you know, pretty much every day. I'll get a good friend of mine in Port Townsend posts things that are just like I have to read them. Another guy, Michael Donnelly, who lives down in Salem, uh, when he posts things, I just I always look at them. He's got a really, he writes for an organization called Counterpunch. Oh. which is an amazing progressive lefty mm -hmm. uh, organization that, that punches as hard on at the right as it does on the left. Oh, it's yeah. really quite amazing. But it's when fun. he sends me stuff, um, I generally read oh, that as well. It's funny you mention that because every one of these is progressive left. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we were to talk about population in a, in a conservative mm -hmm. uh, yeah. venue. That would, that'd be a good what, way to look what, at it. You know, what, do, do they talk about this among themselves like we have here? You know, people... Uh, Let's say conservatives or Republicans think that people should have better cars, better houses. All you have to do is have less people. <laughs> Just less people mm -hmm. and then everybody can have all these things. Well, look at the word conservative, conserve. Yeah. You know, that's that right. conservative <clears throat> used to mean that you were prudent and that you used to mean uh, and I think and conservation. You know, I think the, <laughs> the the party as it exists today, the Republican Party and um, sort of the right wing that, that, that's in power or that holds the, the reins in, yeah. um, in Washington, D.C., in the House of Representatives, let's say, or in the Supreme Court, um, is not a party that uh, is basically a party that's against things like uh, contraception. I mean, it has got, gotten so bad that they, you know, their top issue uh, last week was unfunding, defunding the uh, UNFPA, United Nations Population Fund. And they've got a website right now that's called UCUT. And they'll each week they'll they'll put up an item and they'll see you know what's the resonation you know how many people want to see that particular cut done and they're going after places like Planned Parenthood so yeah, you know right. if you really are are interested in and OPB yeah if you're interested yeah. in in reducing population you don't go after places that provide uh, planning for families mm -hmm. you know and I, I don't think that all Republicans I don't think that all conservatives feel that way I think there's a lot of Republicans and conservatives who feel that um, family planning is important, that population is a real issue, um, population connection, yeah. the group that I'm affiliated with is not partisan. I mean, I think it definitely is gets more nervous as Republicans take over the House of Representatives <laughs> yeah. because they will target, you know, the groups that are in power right now will target uh, groups that make a really big difference internationally in meeting the need of, of women and families around the world. Um, that said, you know, I think they... It is not a Democrat Republican issue. I mean, whether you it can be, no. whether you can continue to live on this planet is a people and a and a species issue. Yeah. You know, it's not a left or right issue. It's 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 coming. You know, whether or not uh, climate change, uh, you know, climate change affects all of us. You may be rich and be able to live in a bubble and vote Republican, or you may you know, or you may be a working class Democrat person, but you're still probably going to want to be outside. Um, enjoying the national parks that we have, or mm -hmm. travel, or whatever it is. We're going to want to breathe the air. <laughs> and so it's not a Republican conservative, yep, right. you know, Republican Democrat you, issue. You, it, this you, is all of us. That's right. They, it shouldn't go either way. When you yeah. say and I think I leftist, think that no, I'm just, hoping that that is becoming <clears throat> apparent to all sides. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, when you get something as prominent as a, as a big article in the New York Times today saying the world is full. I mean, that ought to yeah. get some people really we'll make, stopping we'll in their see. tracks. <laughs> and, I, and I think we have seen some, some movement, you know, on the part of kind of the super wealthy, for instance. You know, during this time when we've been asking, uh, we've been you know, talking about the debt ceiling and talking about, you know, how much money people have, there's been a move by a number of, like, super wealthy to say, no, we, we do want to be taxed. You know, we are a part of the society. We don't yeah. want to pay zero. We don't want to pay less percentage tax than the poorest people. Um, not everyone is doing that, but there, you know, I think there has been some mm -hmm. movement. I think it's uh, mm -hmm. reaching, Bill, Bill Gates you know, senior. exactly, you know, and so, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not like hopeful that in the next year everything's going to turn around, but I do think that 
you know, as we continue to see the tornadoes and we continue to see the sea levels rising and, you know, summertime is a great time to see really amazing catastrophes, you know, the, the no, Arctic and Antarctic <laughs> will continue to melt at increasingly incredible rates. I mean, one thing we're seeing here this year, will be interesting is the snowpack in the Western states is higher than it's been in many years. And the flooding that's going to come from that and already has started across the United States. Yeah. The whole, yeah. So, you know, these continuing and, and I think we need to wake up. I mean, everyone needs to wake up. The world needs to wake up. But a person making a dollar a day and trying to figure out how they're going to feed themselves, you know, has one set of problems. We in very rich um, North America have another set of problems. And I think our problems, you know, whether or not we get our kids to the dentist appointment on time or, you know, whether or not we get the, the right kind of shoes or something for Christmas, those kinds of things really need to like come off the front burner and que bigger questions of how we govern ourselves, how we feed ourselves, how we move things around the board game yeah. of mm -hmm. our society, I, I think are, are, are much more central. And I, I really hope to see more um, emphasis in schools, you know, on teaching kids how to grow their own food. I think that's happening here quite a bit, the farm mm -hmm. to school program yeah. that's Sometimes going on. they do that. You right. know, all the, 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 the explosion of farmer's markets everywhere around the country mm -hmm. is a great thing. You know, the, and the, the encouragement to people to learn how to grow their food. I have a little pet project that I'm dreaming up. I haven't actually gotten it to it yet, but I want to hand it out to the community at large, okay. which is basically printing out a sign. And the sign will say, um, you know, you put it on your front lawn and it says, we have space to farm in our yard. Um, if you're interested, come talk to us. Mm -hmm. oh. And it says that in nice big clear letters. And then what, with each sign comes a model agreement that are very simple kind of agreement that makes the uh, connection between the person who's gonna come farm the yard and the person who owns the house or the renter. And it says, you know, we'll share the proceeds or we'll, you'll give us the tomatoes and $25 a month and we'll pay for the water and yes, this'll right. be the agreement. Wow. And the, each side gets a copy and they sign it and you know we're gonna be cool about your land and we're gonna be, mm -hmm. you know, we're gonna do our best to follow this agreement. And then when you're done with the sign, you give it to your neighbor or you return it to the uh, farmer's market or wherever you got it from. And so I've had this idea to print off these signs and I think a little movement like that could just really turn things around. And I haven't gotten around yeah. to it yet, but anyone who's interested can please mm -hmm. contact me and. Oh, okay. um, and if I don't get to it first, you're welcome to steal the idea. Well, that goes completely against the grain and, and what has been going on with this lack of community and what we were talking about earlier. Everybody's focused down. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, people have to, uh, what's the terminology, when you have your little borders of space, you know, where people can't invade that. Well, they're going to have to expand that. They're going to have to open up to allow people to come in. You right. Know, maybe when they're not home and, right. and go into their yard and all that. That's going to open and it's going to kind of shatter that that kernel we've all put ourselves in, mm -hmm. and that's really an important thing. It's happening. It's happening. There's a group here in town called Backyard Sharing. They've got a, they've got a great little website, backyardsharing.org. Uh, it started, actually, that website started up in uh, Victoria, B.C. And basically, they've got a Google map of your neighborhood, oh. and you can either put in there that you want to have your yard uh, farmed, or you're looking for space to farm. And also, a great development just locally here is the Urban Farm Collective, and if you walk out of this building, and you start walking a little north and west of here, you'll see every vacant lot that's available is starting to be farmed. I was just I mean, going to ask about boom, that. Boom, one day after another, there's another uh, farm like that's just come up, like on Williams right now, uh, right near the Waypost Inn where we did a gritty pave project a couple years ago. Oh. There's a new farm that, that's, that's just uh, built up. And these folks are, um, they're really savvy. I met a couple of them the other day in a cafe just by accident. and. They are just, uh, you know, looking for land and bringing in young people to farm the land. And I, I think it would be very interesting to see if the city and county and metro could get involved in a little bit more and say, okay, you know, we've, we've got enough buildings in Portland. If we want to build anywhere, let's build up. And from now on, any space that's available in the urban area, let's turn that into a farm. They used to call that... Victory Gardens, yeah. right? Now, now that's what right. Well, you know, they're often now corporations. They all these monies for uh, uh, tax breaks. Mm -hmm. Why not give these folks that own this land a little tax break? Yeah, I agree. In order to uh, uh, to let it use, because you know, a lot of these probably belong to uh, large corporations or 
or realty companies, and they may even be unapproachable. Right. That would be a way to approach them. Here's another, here's another spot that I'd love to see um, turned over into a garden, the Lone Fir Cemetery, which is down uh, oh. Belmont and yeah. 20th. Uh, yeah, Morrison and 20th at that corner. Whatever, yeah. Caldwell Park. There's you know, a park right the there. The big, big Colonel cemetery. Summers park. The, okay, so but there's a big cemetery down there. Yeah, and Kitty right on the corner there. of it, there's a vacant lot. And what they wanted to do, they had this big planning process. They sort of raised the lot, and they put a fen nice fence around it. And they were going to do this beautiful meandering garden uh, with landscaping. No food. And what I would love to see is, every day I pass that on my way to work, and I would love to see... The city just go, okay, instead of that, a less expensive proposition and a more community building proposition would be to turn that area into a garden, allow all the residents around there to farm it. And, you know, there's actually a community garden just a few blocks away further south uh, along 20th. And yeah. fantastic. That's but in Colonel The Summer interesting Park, thing yeah. is that um, there's thousands of people in Portland who are waiting for a spot in a community garden. And there's really? like one new community garden that starts each year. So obviously, oh. there's a huge imbalance between the mm -hmm. need um, and the and the interest. So, I think I think that that place that you're talking about, which yeah. is Morrison and Twentieth, right? I think there's some complications it's between Belmont political. and Morrison. Oh, it's very political much a complications, complications in yeah. that they want to they want to honor the uh, the dead who right. uh, who who were buried there. Okay, <laughs> you know, okay. Um, you know, but how much longer are we going to use city land to? Um, to have memorial parks, okay. both Long because cities, you know, they're predicting Portland supposedly growing by a million people in the next 20 years. Mm -hmm. How much longer do you think we're going to be able to have like Rose City Park uh, Cemetery taking up, you know, 20 square blocks? I just yeah, don't see it. I that area is going to be used for either quite a bit. Um, people to live in or people to grow food in, and I propose the latter. But at least we can start with the places where there's yeah. no obvious. Uh, Great sites and where there, and where there's a huge interest right now. You know, it's just a huge wave of people interested and, and in growing the food going right. It's, it's support that movement right. because you know, like we're talking about, food's really important. But I think it's community and, and the knowledge and the uh, and the connection people get with other people and the things that they learn are every bit as important as the food, or even more so. Mm -hmm. um, Absolutely. You, you know, we don't have an endless amount of time right now yeah we're running up to just a few minutes I, here it I, went I, quick. I just want to point out that the reason that we're, we're looking at pretty high prices for gasoline now and food too <laughs> food and which are, are, which related. are related yeah uh, that's right cost of getting it around and, and all that and with it being that high we have to think of supply and demand which is a law and the supply is there I mean, they're, they've got it coming all over the place. The demand is what is so great, and that comes back to being too many people. Mm -hmm. And we just have to say it, and it has to be, like you say, more and more in these articles that you read, more and more awareness, and it's so easy to cure. Yeah. You I just think, don't need you know, so I many think people. The key thing to remember, too, is that we all want to be liked. We want people to like us. We want right. everything to be rosy and happy. And unfortunately, I think we're sort of faced, we're up against the wall right now, and we're going to end up having to say some things that people aren't going to like. I mean, people are not going to like to hear one-child policy for um, the United States. They are not going to like to hear um, you can only drive on even days, you know, which we did in the 70s. Yeah, I they are that. not going to like to hear um, things like, we're, we're, you know, it's not okay for to be fighting wars in, in various places and to have a thousand military bases all around the world so that we can you know guarantee that we have enough um, oil for people to run their hummers they're gonna they're gonna need to be some changes and people are gonna are unfortunately gonna have to start hearing some stuff they're not gonna like yeah you know you are right. not gonna be allowed to that's drive right. hummers anymore just you're not gonna go be allowed to drive SUVs it's just we're done with that yeah. and you know I'll be the person to say it I don't really care if people like me in that respect because I'd rather that your I'd rather your grandkids have a place you know yeah, have a place yeah. to, to live and thrive and have water that they can drink That's and right. air that they can breathe and if that means you can't drive your Hummer anymore because it burns it gets eight miles to the gallon um, then so be it you know we'll get you a Prius or we'll or you know we'll figure out how to get you down to some other mode of transportation that's not as destructive to our planet yeah. and you know our representatives can't say that they cannot legislate that right that's now that's right and they, that's they just, unfortunate but that's going to need to change they're just stuck and if they all change and they join together 
then yes, then they'll solve it. But mm -hmm. if they, as soon as they start mm -hmm. saying what we say, then there's they probably lose, get voted out of office. Well, well yeah, we and that's why I think it's also possible that we're going to need to have a revolution. And I don't know that it's necessarily going to be a peaceful one. It's happening in Egypt. It's happening in Yemen. It's happening in Syria. It's happened in Tunisia. I, I it's see that it could Wisconsin. happen here as well. It's happening mm -hmm. in Wisconsin, exactly. Yeah. It's happening in Indiana and mm -hmm. Florida mm -hmm. and Vermont. I mean, in and Oregon. It's own, in its own way, it's happening here. Yeah. And, and yeah. They, none of this needs to happen. Yeah, I mean, I prefer none it to be peaceful, to but I don't yeah. know that it's going to be. I mean, if we're really serious about continuing life on the planet, we have yeah. such huge um, things to change so quickly. I, I'm not exactly sure how we're going to do it, but I don't know that it's going to be peaceful. Yeah, well, okay. change is the, is, the, is the optimum word for that. We've used up our a little bit over our 50 minutes here. Albert, it's always great yes. to talk with you. Likewise. Right. We could sit Thank down and you. do this for another hour, and so we'll have to do it another time. That sounds yeah, fantastic. That's right. Thanks All for right. having me. All right.